Good morning, everyone. We welcome you at the LCF Lebanon Looking Forward Forum. We can ask you to stand up for the Lebanese national anthem. Uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's really a pleasure to host you at uh, the Institute of Political Science of the St. Joseph University of Beirut. Uh, it's really heartwarming to see uh, packed auditoriums uh, uh, these days, particularly uh, two years after the pandemic. Uh, last, year, last week, uh, my colleague, the Dean of the Faculty of Law, uh, organized uh, an important conference on depositors' rights in the aftermath of the financial crisis, and we also had uh, over 340 people who could not uh, uh, enter into the auditorium. Uh, luckily, we also had a Facebook Live, and today we also have uh, a broadcast uh, online. Uh, I'm uh, really uh, thankful to our uh, partners, uh, the Lebanese uh, Citizen Foundation and uh, the Norwegian Embassy. I have been uh, following uh, uh, the work of the Lebanese Citizen Foundation for the past uh, uh, couple of years, ever since it was launched, and I was really impressed by several conferences they organized. I think uh, you played an instrumental role in uh, uh, introducing several important uh, debates that are often forgotten uh, in Lebanon. I remember a very interesting conference on Lebanon's new development model with uh, Hassan Salame and uh, uh, Ambassador Pierre Duquesne and uh, other experts that I see here in, uh, with us uh, today. Uh, I remember also a most interesting round table on the green energy revolution and you were one of the first to tackle this fundamental issue in Lebanon. I remember uh, your uh, conference on hydrocarbons uh, so we are uh, delighted to be uh, partners with you. I think the Lebanese public deserves to have such fundamental, crucial public policy issues discussed in an academic setting, away from uh, media agitation, away from controversies, away from uh, paid propagandists. So uh, I would really uh, like to thank individually every one of the leading uh, uh, academic and the public policy e experts who accepted to take part in our conference. I'm not going to name them one by one. You have the program. I will just say that uh, to briefly introduce uh, this two-day event. We have the first panel today that will be moderated by our colleague uh, Karim Daher, uh, Fostering Justice and Rule of Law, uh, a second panel, Optimizing Good Governance, and tomorrow, Re-Engineering the Economy and Enhancing Societal Welfare. On every one of these panels, we, uh, we will have about uh, uh, 10 uh, speakers or discussants, and most of these issues are not only crucial to Lebanon's future, but uh, I was struck by the fact that almost none of these issues were discussed during the recent uh, legislative elections that took place in Lebanon. 
Unfortunately, the political debate in Lebanon tends to focus exclusively on geopolitics, on uh, uh, sometimes focusing on what uh, U.S. academic Mahmoud Mamdani calls culture talk. Uh, this one resembles us, this one does not resemble us. Uh, it was really uh, sickening to see that many important fundamental issues were not discussed. So uh, when uh, Alain Bifani suggested that uh, we uh, host uh, this interesting event, uh, we were immediately uh, delighted to host it. I would like to thank uh, the rector of our university, Professor Salim Dakash, who has always been a staunch defender of academic freedom for immediately welcoming this idea and supporting us. I also would like to express heartfelt thanks to uh, the Norwegian embassy yesterday. Uh, it was a curious coincidence. I stumbled upon an article that was written uh, by a government official in 1971 expressing hope that Lebanon would one day become the Norway of the Arab world. Many liberals, progressives, reformers in Lebanon uh, have always looked towards Norway. And what you are doing today is uh, really important because uh, it is uh, at this point in history, at this particular junction, uh, it is important to imagine a new social contract to combine economic development and social justice. And Norway is a country uh, that uh, really has a lot to uh, teach us. Uh, I, I am really overwhelmed by this appetite for public debates that we are witnessing uh, in uh, Lebanon uh, these days. I think uh, we should focus much more on public policy than on geopolitics or petty political rivalries. And I say this, I'm a professor of international relations, so my expertise is not public policy. I was looking yesterday at the list of the 72 conferences or roundtables that we have organized in the past few years. And I realized that most of these events were focused on uh, geopolitics, the rising influence of Iran in the region in the aftermath of the uh, US invasion of Iraq in 2003. We talked a lot about the proxy wars. We talk a lot about the culture wars, the debates uh, going on in North Africa and in the Middle East. We have had a few round tables on public policies, but I think uh, it is the first time, and I'm really uh, grateful that the Lebanese Citizen Foundation uh, was able to gather such a distinguished uh, group of speakers. So uh, welcome to all of you. I'm sure we will have most uh, interesting debates in the next uh, couple of years, a couple of days, and that this will continue over the next months and the next years to reach our common objective, which is to build a country that would be truly sovereign, to recover our national sovereignty, and again, the word sovereignty has been used on a daily basis during the elections, but unfortunately, it was focused exclusively on one aspect of sovereignty, which is obviously fundamental, but which is not the only one. Those who are genuinely sovereignists should also talk about public policies, about economic sovereignty, about our national currency. Unfortunately, we see many people in Lebanon masquerading as sovereignists while they uh, went missing in action when uh, we needed courageous men and women to stand up to powerful vested interest groups that tried to torpedo any economic rescue plan. So sovereignty has always been a battle that this university has led. Today is the 40th anniversary of the Israeli invasion of Lebanon in 1982. Many students and professors at the time were at the forefront when it came to denouncing this invasion. During the Syrian occupation of Lebanon, it was also uh, here at USG that we witnessed a massive student mobilization. 
And today, uh, most of our students and professors are also doing everything they can to help Lebanon recover its sovereignty, to strengthen our national institutions, our state, our army, our security forces. But uh, today we will focus also on this most important aspect, which is public policies that will help us regain not only our national sovereignty, but our, also our economic independence and build a strong state that is ultimately our only guarantee and our only protect, protection against permanent foreign interferences and against private interests uh, trying to dictate their terms on public debates and dictate their terms on the entire Lebanese population. Thank you all for being with us. And Alain, thanks again for this uh, terrific idea. Thank you, Mr. Bitar. Uh, now it's time to listen to the president of LCF, Mr. Alain Bifani. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. It's a wonderful thing to be with you today. I would like first to thank from the bottom of my heart, my friend Karim Bitar, who is doing wonders for Lebanon, for USG on the academic, but also on the uh, societal uh, aspects of Lebanon's life nowadays. I would like also to uh, tell you that I'm very delighted to work with our Norwegian friends who are absolutely uh, amazing in doing what they're doing. And I would like to salute here Ambassador Itervik. Uh, and the final reason why I'm delighted is to see all of you, I mean, so many brilliant Lebanese around, including our chairman, our experts, our authors, and this lovely assistance. Distinguished board members, Dr. Michael Bauer, who is with us today, uh, and the board member of the institution. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lebanon Forward Looking. Again, I'm delighted to be here today for the opening of this forum, and I'm calling it forum because this is the first step on a, a hopefully a long path. Your presence here at this noteworthy, comprehensive, but inclusive policy discussion forum, which is being co-hosted by the Royal Norwegian Embassy and St. Joseph University, means a lot to all of us. It is indeed very encouraging to have so many high-level experts in different various fields contributing to this exceptional event. The conference aspires to provide a very unique and novel opportunity for us all because of its scope. It has attracted reformists from all over the world and professionals with wide-ranging knowledge on different subjects demonstrating an exceptional eagerness to push Lebanon toward a sustainable recovery path. And it is so good to see many beautiful faces of Lebanon and Lebanon's friends in this room. I would like also to uh, acknowledge the presence of Dr. Oysgaard, who was the governor of the Central Bank of Iceland in a very difficult period of time and who's gonna share his experience with us. In particular, being at USG today for such a special event is an immense pleasure. This institution has stood forever with its leaders, its staff, and its students for the Lebanon we dream of. It has been a haven of tolerance and excellence, and the monument on which our country can rely at all time. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you to Père Dakash. Thank you to Karim Dar, and thanks, of course, to our Norwegian sponsors, without whom this wouldn't have happened. As I said, I have had the pleasure of working with Norway on the oil and gas file initially, and on good governance issues later on. And it was such a great experience that I chose the Norwegian constituency when I led the successful bid of Lebanon to join EBRD. And today, the Citizen Foundation is very proud to team up with a country 
that promotes peace and values throughout the world and with an amazing team led by Ambassador Itervik in Beirut. Lebanon's attempt to restore its economy and society, as you know, has continuously revealed several significant flaws. Lebanon has lacked a comprehensive and effective endeavor to modify and enhance its public policies. The country has been witnessing inconsistencies in policy making and updating. Reform plans have been neglected or have sometimes overlooked the Lebanese context. And therefore, a contextualized and inclusive bottom-up policy discourse and the multi-pronged reform agenda remains necessary. In this context, the Lebanese Citizen Foundation has been founded with aims to promote Lebanon's efficient and relevant public policy solutions. The foundation serves as a tool for strategic thinking and influence for the many participants on the Lebanese stage, whether local or foreign. By the way, let me just tell everybody that translation is available should you need it. Its mission is to accompany Lebanon beyond the conclusion of the crisis, anticipating future problems and critical decisions. The Lebanese Citizen Foundation has so far hosted many cross-thematic conferences, and Karim was kind enough to mention them, which got people engaging and creating networks influencing Lebanon's reform agenda. Today marks yet another LCF's endeavor to discuss ways to restore Lebanon's welfare. And today I would like to thank, again, our Norwegian the Norwegian authorities and Ambassador Itervik for making this ambitious project happen. Lebanon Looking Forward, the name of the project, is an inclusive policy-oriented discussion forum devoted to identifying, discussing, and developing reform perspectives on public policies. This forum will bring policy discussions to a grassroots level, whereby society, as well as professionals, partake in policy dialogue together to bring about the necessary change and reform that sets the country back on track. This forum aspires to facilitate an open space for engagement in discussions of issues related to policy reform with a community-centered lens. The discussion delivers a platform to exchange ideas on a national policy dialogue aiming to promote policy advocacy with a participatory reformative approach. This event is intended for you, our nation's young scholars, journalists, and women activists, to be creators of change and partake in a role in redeeming the Lebanon that we cherish. We invite you to inclusively and actively participate in the upcoming national policy deliberation. And I thank you very much for being with us today. A promising program awaits ahead. We host prominent speakers with vast knowledge and expertise. And along this journey, the audience will interact with the various sessions that cover 16 publications in depth, covering a wide range of topics in different areas. These areas are related to systemic issues, economics, law, migration, culture, art, critical social issues, and others. We will have four hybrid panels uh, or panel discussion sessions that will be held to review and discuss the papers of every policy reform area revolving around the following themes. The first is fostering justice and rule of law. Second is optimizing good governance, then re-engineering the economy, and finally enhancing societal welfare. Once more, as we host this conference, we look forward to getting acquainted with and discussing several issues, as well as listening to other people's views with regard to policy reform. Your involvement will not be only limited to the event itself, for the action has just begun. Your input will be ongoing and distinctly favorable in following options, uh, actions and events organized post the conference, where a comprehensive, forward-looking, inclusive policy roadmap will be designed. While at the conference, please share your thoughts, contribute to discussions, and advance your knowledge. 
when you return home, continue your involvement, namely using our dedicated website and social media platforms, as we wish to continue to grow and integrate new ideas, remaining motivated and responsive to your feedback. The 16 position papers will be soon uploaded to our Lebanon Looking Forward website, where registered members will be given the chance to review the papers, interact with the author's ideas, and have the feedback of the authors when needed. In several weeks from now, your feedback will be fed into the final policy document, which will encompass the discussed policy reforms and constitute a solid pillar, hopefully, to Lebanon's policy recovery. I wish you a very nice couple of days, and thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bifani. And now we are glad to welcome on stage the ambassador of the Royal Norwegian Embassy, Mr. Martin Yitervik. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. And it was uh, interesting to, to hear that uh, Norway was uh, in 1971 looked upon as a model for, uh, for Lebanon to emulate. And uh, in 1971, uh, our Norwegian uh, participant was actually visiting Lebanon in that, in that year. Of course, there are vast differences between the two countries, maybe opposites attract. We have like uh, close to 90% state-run uh, education system and uh, health care system. So uh, that's, uh, that leads me to also some important things. Uh, Norwegians, Norwegian, I think diplomats in general need to, need to do, it is to uh, move around and meet all uh, citizens of the society. So uh, last week I, uh, I uh, had discussions with the inmates of uh, Rumi prison, including the, the B ward, I think it's called, or is it D, where the uh, Irhab or terror cell is. They were all from uh, Akkor, as they say there, <laughs> from northern Lebanon. They are the lowest uh, uh, level in, in the society. And I think I, with fairness, can say that Lebanon is a, is a class society par excellence. Uh, the, um, but I will uh, get back to uh, my written text and in between maybe say a few more things. So, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is a great pleasure to be with you today. The Norwegian Embassy is pleased to collaborate with the Lebanese Citizen Foundation and the Institute of Political Science of St. Joseph University on this event. Lebanon is facing tremendous challenges. Since the economic crisis struck in 2019, Lebanon has been hit with enormous hardship, including the Beirut port explosion and the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. The economic collapse, the result of decades of failed politics, has pushed much of the population into poverty. At the same time, the country has great potential. In spite of economic hardship and the exodus of much talented, needed talent, there are still people and organizations, whether in the private sector or, or in non-governmental organizations, that are committed to rebuild Lebanon. Outside the country, the diaspora remains a pillar of support. Moreover, the result of the recent elections show that there are people willing to challenge the status quo to take the country in a new direction. While other parts of the world may currently claim the international spotlight, Norway remains a strong supporter of Lebanon. In fact, part of the inspiration for this conference, from our side, was a desire by our, by our Deputy Foreign Minister, 
Henrik Thune of the Labour Party to contribute to dialogue in Lebanon. It is a strongly held belief in Norway that only inclusive dialogue can create the conditions for peace and stability. Over the next two days, we will discuss a range of policy issues that urgently need to be addressed in Lebanon. Through discussions and dialogue with experts from different fields, we hope that the papers presented during these two days and the discussions they will spark here at the forum will help contribute to a way forward for Lebanon. Every country has its unique characteristics and contexts, and Lebanon is no exception. This is why this forum brings together experts with in-depth knowledge of Lebanese society and history. There is, however, a lot to be learned from the experience of others. One example is the financial crisis that hit Iceland, our, neighboring, our neighbors and ancient relatives, uh, in 2008. In order to recover, Iceland took action, including through banking sector restructuring and fiscal policies, in line with the conditionalities of the IMF. I am very pleased that the Norwegian senior economist, and he's Norwegian, not Icelandic, as many people <laughs> seem to think, the Norwegian senior economist and former president of the Central Bank of Iceland at the time when these changes took place, Mr. Svein Harald Øygar, will be with us to share his experience and insights. That is uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, 1.20 till 2. Mr. Ögar has also written a very interesting book about his experiences uh, in Iceland. We hope that the discussions and exchanges during this forum will continue beyond these two days and contribute to the reforms and changes that are needed in Lebanon. This fall, we are planning a similar exercise focusing on Lebanon in the regional context. Finally, I would like to give a special thank to Mr. Alain Bifani and to uh, Mr. Karim Bitar and uh, their teams at, at the Citizen Foundation and at the University of St. Joseph. I would also like to thank my two colleagues, Sven Verolsen and Mari Grepsta at the Embassy, Sven is here, for their work uh, leading to this event. So that uh, wraps up the number of our the size of our diplomats. We are only three, actually. <laughs> so uh, that's it. Thank you very much.